This most famous battle was fought by South African soldiers in France during the First World War and is always suitably remembered on the Sunday closest to the 16th of July every year. In 1916, the 1st South African Infantry Brigade found itself to be part of the 9th Scottish Division on what was known as the Western Front in Europe during the Great War. The South African Brigade, under the command of Brigadier General H.T. Lucan, was made up of four infantry regiments, namely the 1st South African Infantry, comprising Cape of Good Hope Regiment, 2nd South African Infantry, comprising Natal and Free State Regiments, 3rd South African Infantry, comprising the Transvaal and Rhodesia Regiments, and the 4th South African Infantry, the South African Scottish Regiment, mainly from the Transvaal. On the evening of the 15th of July 1916, the South African Brigade was called upon to assist in clearing the village of Langeval and to capture the Delville Wood adjacent to this village. After going into battle of intense fighting, being harassed by German snipers, <coughs> excuse me, and heavy bombardment, they managed to recapture the village, which was by then reduced to ruins and rubble. The brigade then moved into Delville Wood, later to be described by some survivors as Devil's Wood, meeting fierce resistance and more heavy bombardment. There were no reinforcements, much suffering, numerous acts of bravery, and an excessively heavy toll in human lives. It was the rainy season, and the excessive mud increased the men's suffering and discomfort. On the evening of the 15th of July 1916, the South African Brigade numbered 3,153 men, 121 officers, and 3,032 other ranks. On the morning of the 19th of July 1916, 1,080 men were dead, 1,735 were wounded, only 338 came out of the battle physically unscathed. The wood itself, with its dense undergrowth, also suffered from heavy artillery shelling and was reduced to a few stumps and broken branches half buried in the mud. It has had to be replanted twice in attempts to get it back to its original condition. There are only 51 South African graves at Delver Wood. There were not sufficient remains of the other 1,029 dead soldiers to bury. A German officer made this entry in his diary on the 17th of July, 1916, concerning Delver Wood. The wood was a wasteland of shattered trees, charged and burning stumps, and craters thick with mud and blood, and corpses everywhere. In places, the corpses were piled four deep. Worst of all was the lowing of the wounded, sounding like a cattle ring at a, fence, at a spring fair. Another historian described the battle as follows. The brigade had hung on in the wood without reinforcements or relief for an incredibly long time, six days and five nights, standing firm against the impossible odds. This had also been the first occasion of any significance that South Africans of whatever descent had fought and died together. King George V, while visiting the war cemeteries across Europe after the war and having viewed the rows of headstones at war cemeteries, and referring to the Commonwealth War Graves Commission in 1920, made the following statement. We can truly say that the whole circuit of the earth is girdled with the graves of our dead. Never before in history have a people thus maintained individual memorials to their fallen. And in the course of my pilgrimage, I have many times asked myself whether there can be no more potent advocates of peace on earth through the years to come than this mass multitude of silent witnesses to the desolation of war. It is the task of the Pretoria Memorial Services Council to stage memorial services like today so that people living in the capital city of our country can also remember the brave deeds of those who sacrificed their all for the security of the world.